Hey everyone, Julie here. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button below. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how I got my six month old son to sleep through the night. Now, I'm just going to start off by saying that we started sleep training at four months. That is when our pediatrician gave the okay to go ahead and start training him to sleep through the night. Unfortunately, it did not work out as planned at four months. So basically what happened was um, what I'm going to start with as my one number one tip, and that is make sure to start sleep training when you know that your child is not sick, going to be sick, teething or going through any other kind of event in your life, big event, especially uh, if you guys are moving and that is not the next thing is make sure that you are committed to staying home at least two weeks while you train your child. And I say that because you need your child to be in a familiar environment. They need to be in their own room, in their own crib. Yes, I know but that is the best way that they are going to learn to self-soothe and to know that they are in a safe place, that they're always gonna be in that place when they go to sleep at night. So we started our son at four months, and of course, two days later, he got sick, so we pretty much had to stop right then and there because he was up all night coughing and wheezing, and I just didn't wanna leave him alone when he was sick like that, obviously. So I decided to stop. We waited another couple of weeks and then he was going through teething. So I just said, all right, we will wait a little bit longer. So we did end up waiting till six months. And I know that some pediatricians do recommend six months. Ours said it gave us the go ahead at four months, but I think looking back, we probably um, should have just started at six months. I think that is really when he was more ready for it. So the next thing is make sure that your child's room is dark. We use blackout curtains because any sign of light and my son is just looking around the room at things. So having a dark, dark room, and I'm talking like pitch black dark, guys. I know not every child is gonna be like this, but that is the best way to keep their attention off of anything else. Some kids sleep with mobiles that are, you know, ding-a-linging above their heads. I just think that's distracting and that just keeps them up even longer, but I know it lulls some babies to sleep, so it might work for you. But again, that's kind of a sleep prop. And the biggest challenge with sleep training is that you are teaching your child to self-soothe. So we decided that we were gonna make it pitch black and white noise is the next thing I have for you. So white noise, you can use a fan, you could use uh, an actual machine that makes ocean sounds or a lullaby. Uh, you can play a CD for them or you know whatever device that you have to play music can be soothing for them. But the other reason why that really helped with our son is that we didn't have to worry about tiptoeing around the house whenever we put him to bed. Um, and he was familiar with that noise. He associated that noise with going to sleep on his own. So that's not so much a, as much of a sleep prop now. He probably could sleep without the noise. We just keep it going because that way we can just watch TV and, um, you know, walk around our house without worrying about waking him up at night. So we still do that with him. And then the next thing is you want to be sure to establish a bedtime routine and to do bedtime at the same time every night. So stick to a schedule. So we put our son to bed around 7, 7.30, depending on how tired he is. Sometimes it's even as late as eight, but it's a little bit better to start off earlier in the night, especially when they're younger, they do tend to go to bed earlier just because they are more tired at that age. So he goes to bed, I would say around 7.30. We always uh, bring him in his room, turn down the lights, turn on his white noise, change his diaper, put diaper cream on or whatever you need to do and change him. And then we give him a bottle or gave him a bottle. He's a year now, so things are a little bit different. But at the time we would give him a bottle. I think we were giving him about eight ounces um, of formula. Uh, I was breastfeeding and formula, but um, we, I just decided to do uh, formula for before bed. Cause I think that actually helps him feel a little bit fuller and just, it seemed to help him sleep better. So we gave him this bottle and we rocked him in our rocking chair. And then we would either sing him a little lullaby or we would read a book with him. And that's just a great way to wind them down, help make them more tired. And the rocking motion also helps. Now, again, 
we're not rocking the child to sleep and we're not singing them to sleep. These are just things that we're doing to help create the mood for bedtime. It's very important. So you always want to put your child down drowsy, but awake. So never while they're already asleep. I mean, that might happen a time or two, but generally speaking, when you are committed to sleep training, you want to be sure that your child is awake, but tired. And sometimes they're not even tired when they go to bed. I mean, my son, thank goodness, is very good about this now. Like, even when he's not tired, if we put him in his crib, he knows it's time for bed and he goes to sleep. Um, but I know not every child is gonna be like that. So that was just our experience with it. Then. Biggest thing is the method in which you allow your child to fall to sleep. So I tried many different methods with this. I tried the Ferber method, um, which is where you uh, let them cry for extended periods of time and then lengthen those times. So I would put him down, walk out, he would cry about five minutes, I would go in, pat, reassure. Big thing is do not pick the child up. If you pick them up, they know that they are going to get what they want, that mommy's gonna come in and save them. Just pat them on the back, reassure them. And I know guys, like this was challenging for me. So what happened was for my son, and again, this is different for every child, but for my son, it just made him more and more angry <laughs> that I was basically teasing him, going in and saying, oh, I'm here, like, don't worry. And then I would leave and then he would get more and more upset. So unfortunately, that method of the five minute, 10 minute, 15 minutes, so on and so forth, did not work for me. So next, we tried the, um, basically the harsher, if you wanna say, method of crying it out. And that is basically, um, we would let him cry for however long it would take to cry. So the great thing about this with him was thankfully he cried an average of about 20 minutes and then fell asleep after we put him down for the night. And then he was going through um, basically like this phase where he was waking up maybe every three hours in the night. So it was an all night process and Another tip I have for you would be to maybe not go to bed when they do, but go plan to do this like on a weekend when you can go to bed later, especially for the first couple nights. Cause the first couple nights guys, they are going to be rough and you are gonna second guess yourself and think, am I doing the right thing? Should I go save them? Are they ready for this? But trust me, I had those same feelings and he was fine. He, we made it through the first two nights of the 20 minute cry every three hours. And then I would say I saw improvement by the third or fourth night where he would only cry for maybe five minutes and then he would go back to sleep. Now, I would say two weeks was the time period that it took for him to really get this down and understand that if he wakes up in the night, cause that's the point guys, is it's not that they're, basically they're, if they're waking up in the night, they're used to mommy and daddy coming in, giving them the pacifier and helping them go back, back to sleep. So when they get up and they cry, it's because they're teaching, we're teaching them that they need to learn how to just go back to sleep. Um, and that's without any sleep props, without the passy. We gave my son his pacifier when we put him down for the night, but when he woke up in the night, we were not going back in there, popping that thing back in his mouth. He had to just figure out, it's still dark in my room, it's still nighttime, and it's still time to sleep. And he would go back to sleep. So that was our experience with it. And now he is a little over a year now, and he sleeps through the night every single night. We never worry about him waking up. And even if he does, like I've heard him maybe once or twice, he cries for like maybe 30 seconds and then it goes back to sleep because he knows that he's in his room, he's in the dark, it's nighttime and he is okay to go back to sleep. So these were my tips for how you get your child to sleep through the night. That was my experience and that is what worked for us. And as I said, I'm sure that this is different for every child, but I would say that this is definitely the most effective method that is pretty foolproof and that I would recommend for you. So 
Once again, please, please subscribe to my channel. I update content every week, sometimes even twice a week. I have a whole bunch of videos about DIYs. I uh, have motherhood and family videos. I have videos about beauty and health. Um, and guys, I'm always looking for suggestions. Please, please comment below and let me know if you have any other questions or if there's any other video content that you would like for me to upload and I will do my best to bring it to my channel. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.